Legacy Motor Club lays off Jimmy Johnson's 84 team, and does Kyle Busch possibly have a performance clause in his contract? <music> Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Apparently, this is the week for NASCAR teams to be like, hey, we don't need you anymore. Because not only was Corey LaJoy told that he would not be retained for 2025 over at Spire, Legacy Motor Club also let go of most of the members of the number 84 team for Jimmy Johnson, including his crew chief, Jason Burdett. But they do plan on competing in the final three races of his schedule this year at Kansas, Las Vegas, and Phoenix, which is a bit confusing because they will need to, one, pit that car, and two, also engineer that car. And without your crew chief and without the guys on the crew... I'm not sure how that's all going to work out. Now, I assume that they're just going to lease a pit crew out from somebody else, have them pit the car, and then they'll just probably use an engineer that's already on staff at Legacy Motor Club to be his crew chief. But things aren't going very well over at Legacy Motor Club, which is unfortunate, right? Since bringing Jimmy Johnson on and changing the name to Legacy Motor Club, the team has been up, down, down, kind of up a little bit. And seemingly last year, the first half of the year, bad. Second half of the year, Pretty good. Brought a lot of speed to the racetrack. First half of this year, switching over to Toyota. Bad. Second half of the year, well, we've started to see them pick up a little bit more speed. John Hunter Nemechek, Eric Jones have shown some speed. Jimmy Johnson, though, has seemingly been out to sea in his races this year in the Cup Series. He has a best finish in his return to part-time driving last year and then this year of 28th. He did that twice this year. Daytona 500, as well as the race that he ran at Dover. And for Jimmy, he just seemingly has not adapted to this Gen 7 Cup car at all. And that's not the biggest shock. Jimmy Johnson basically made his entire career in the Car of Tomorrow era and the Gen 6 era. So he, he spent a lot of his time driving loose race cars off the right rear, making up a ton of time that way. I mean, how many times we see Jimmy Johnson spin out during races, find that limit, and then end up winning said races or finishing in the top five? You can't really do that with this car. It's really hard to pass. You cannot drive this car super loose at all because it just snaps. The lack of sidewall on these tires makes these cars super on edge combined with all the other aero things that they're doing. Jimmy Johnson just has not adapted to this at all whatsoever. And it's unfortunate, right? He is a seven-time NASCAR Cup Series champion. He's got 83 wins in his career. The guy knows how to win races. And I know fans are going to be like, well, he doesn't have Chad Canals now, so that's why he's not being competitive. Well, I'll be completely honest. Is it Chad? Is it not having Chad? Because Chad went over to William Byron, and he won a grand total of one race, and that was a plate race at Day uh, Daytona in the summertime. So I think the two of them together certainly form this Superman formidable pair, but I don't think that necessarily you can be like, oh, Jimmy's not winning because Chad's not there, because when Chad didn't have Jimmy, he didn't win either, and uh, you know, vice versa. Jimmy Johnson, people will continue to say that he's tarnishing his legacy coming back and running these races. I don't think so. Who cares? The guy's a seven-time champion. He's established himself amongst the sports greats. He's the greatest driver of the generation that he was in bar none, like not even close. And the man won five NASCAR Cup Series championships in a row. And you can say that it was a format. He won it in every iteration of the format that they gave him, other than just a straight up, you know, full season championship, which, I mean, realistically, he got, what, two shots at that. So uh, not a shock that the rookie and then a sophomore year driver didn't win a championship. But in every other iteration of the chase and the playoffs, he's gone ahead and won one. So yeah, the guy has cemented his legacy as being an all-time great. If he wants to come back and run some races, you know, fine, do it. Who cares? Even if he runs poorly. The thing about it is he's not necessarily running these races because, you know, he has this itching desire to run these races, which I'm sure he definitely does. The nine races that he is running in 2024, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the sponsor wants him to be there. The same way we see Dale Jr., you know, race an Xfinity Series race is essentially what it comes down to is the sponsors like, hey, yeah, we'll sponsor, you know, these cars of John Hart, Nemechek and Eric Jones, but we'd like to see Jimmy Johnson in a car, you know, for two, maybe three races, Advent Health, as well as Family Dollar, uh, Dollar Tree. They all want to see Jimmy Johnson in a race car because you get the marketing materials of having a seven time NASCAR Cup Series Jimmy Johnson in your race car. You get the uh, PR opportunities, you get the appearance opportunities, you get a lot that comes with that. I'm not sure what his 2025 plans are. As Bob Pocker said in his tweet, still TBD. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you probably won't see Jimmy Johnson next year, maybe in the Daytona 500, 
Um, but outside of that, I just don't see him showing up at any more races because it has not been a great return for him. Today's video is sponsored once again by Driven Sunglasses. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I once again will have these camber sunglasses on. These are probably my second favorite, if not my favorite tied at the top. Um, but I really enjoy wearing these sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears them. Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, myself. Take a look at Driven Sunglasses today. Moving on to another topic, a hypothetical. Let me say, I don't know if this is true or not. I haven't seen Kyle Busch's contract, but could Kyle Busch have a performance clause in his contract? Now, if people aren't aware, performance clause essentially gives the driver or the team an out of that contract to be like, hey, in a driver's situation, if he doesn't qualify for the playoffs and the team doesn't give him a race winning car, something like that, he can elect to be like, yeah, I'm out. We're not doing this. We saw Sebastian Vettel do that in Formula One when he managed to leave Red Bull to go over to Ferrari. We've seen it happen other times as well. Max Verstappen also apparently has a performance clause in his Red Bull contract. Red Bull might maybe might want to stop doing that at times. We've seen it happen in NASCAR, too. From the team standpoint, the team's like, hey, you didn't finish, you know, with X amount of points. You know, you didn't finish high enough in the point standings, something like that. You didn't qualify for the playoffs. Then you can see stuff like that happen as well. Dalton Sargent is a pretty good example of that in the truck series. I think it might have been more sponsor based, though, but he didn't qualify for the NASCAR truck series playoffs when he ran his one season at GMS Racing and he was dropped um, before the playoffs started into the regular season. All right, finish out that race and you're you're done for the rest of the year. So we've seen it happen before. Now, I don't know if Kyle Busch has a performance clause in his contract, but if he did, it maybe possibly could include things like qualifying for the playoffs, winning a race, certain number of top fives, certain number of top tens even. And from a driver's standpoint, it could be, you know, the team didn't give you X amount of opportunities to get those. From the team standpoint, it could be, hey, you didn't qualify for the playoffs. That's on you. We want to go ahead and drop you and move on. Now, I don't know if any of that is in his contract. I would assume that a guy like Kyle Busch would maybe put a performance clause into his contract during negotiations. Because if you remember, when Kyle Busch was exploring his free agency, he wanted to go back to Joe Gibbs Racing. He, Kyle Busch is a grade A talent, right? He's one of the best drivers of this current generation. Um, going down to RCR was for lack of a better term, below him in a sense. Uh, it's not an organization that has won a championship in the better part of, well, 30 years almost. And actually, yeah, <laughs> 30 years. So yeah, it, for him to make that move, you know, is him taking a risk. So he's definitely in the point of leverage here in negotiations to be like, hey, I'll come down here and try to help you guys improve your program. But, you know, maybe work in and out. Now, of course, the team did pick up his driver option for 2024. Uh, five. But again, if there's a performance clause in there from Kyle's standpoint, he could uh, elect to exercise that option and say deuces to welcome North Carolina and try to find somewhere else. Now, again, let me say, I don't know if that's what's happening there. I'm just wondering things like that because, you know, a guy like Kyle, like I said, was in a position of, of power during this negotiating period. Yeah, there are other teams that he could have gone to out there. RCR, maybe was the last like reasonable team standing but from kyle's standpoint it's like i'll sign this two-year deal i'll come down here and, and try to help but you know if things aren't working i need an out i need to be able to get out of here and, and move on also saw a lot of people on the internet being like oh he's not going to be on the rcr deal because he needs rcr to help with the development of of his son's career kyle bush does not need richard childers racing to help Brexton Bush's career progress up the ladder. There are plenty of other teams out there. If the kid has talent, that will absolutely help sign him up and move him up the ladder. Kyle Bush doesn't need RCR to do that. If Kyle Bush hypothetically went to Spire, guess what? Brexton Bush is now a Spire <laughs> athlete and he'll work up the ladder with them. Track houses options. Like there's tons of other teams out there that would absolutely take on uh, a kid like Brexton Bush who's winning and has a corporate sponsor in Surf Pro, which is bizarre. But yeah, no, I'm, I, I don't think that has even entered the conversation. So, yeah, just wondering, maybe Kyle Busch has a performance clause. Maybe he doesn't. It's just one of those things that I think is worth pondering, at least. So let me know in the comments what you think about the Jimmy Johnson situation, the Kyle Busch situation. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.